Welcome to our Requirements Engineering Lecture on Traceability. We're now almost done with the complete Requirements Engineering process. We just have this one topic left, which is tracing a big part of the Requirements Management process. We also talked about this in the previous lecture on change management. Today we're going to look first into an introduction, why should you care about traceability and tracing, then going to classification and then subsequently to documentation. So let's start with the introduction to traceability. If you should describe it in a nutshell, it is essentially what happened when to A or B requirements. So you want to learn everything about the history and have something like a log file to say, explain it in, in, in computer science terms. But of course, there's also a more complicated but more precise definition to requirements traceability. Requirements traceability refers to the ability to describe and follow the life of a requirement in both a forwards and backwards direction. In essence, from its origins, through its development and specification, to its subsequent deployment and use, and through all periods of ongoing refinement and iteration in any of those phases. There are various advantages of traceability, which essentially then tell you why you would like to do it. One is that they have the change management process where you would like to know which other artifacts are affected by a change. So what are the relationships between certain requirements? It also helps with process improvement. Trace problems in the development process back to their cause. Like where did this problem start? Is it this requirement or the previous one or the previous one? It's also very helpful in the context of reuse. You identify development artifacts associated with a requirement. If a requirement is reused, the development artifact might also be used. So you have a link between requirement and the development artifact. Accountability is another interesting point because you can calculate, estimate the development efforts to implement a requirement. How long did it take? And then in the context of maintenance, it helps you to have a simplified cause effect analysis, impact analysis, and so on. There are more advantages of traceable requirements like verifiability, which ensures it is easy to verify whether a requirement has been implemented or not. It also helps you with the various types of identification of gold-plated solutions, either in the system by having something like a reverse function to verifiability, where you can check for each function whether it implements a requirement, or when you think about identification of gold-plated solution in requirements, you can trace requirements to their origins and then analyze whether a requirement contributes to a certain goal. And if not, in both cases, you just throw them out. But there is a rather big problem with tracing everything. It is often just too much to process. So it's not only expensive in terms of money, but also in terms of time. So what makes more sense is to track with a certain purpose, a so purpose-driven tracing. Uh, you do not track everything, you track according or you trace according to needs um, so that you really need, uh, get what you need and have some kind of a sufficient level of detail. To give you a little bit of a feeling of which information to track and trace, let's have maybe a look at the state changes of a requirement. Start at the top of the figure with a start and then you create a requirement. And a created requirement could be deleted right away if it's never used, but let's assume that it moves to the analysis phase where you do quality assurance and if it fails, it goes back to created and then it's subsequently maybe deleted um, or it passes the quality assurance and then moves to the state of quality checked. It can still be deleted, but again, that's boring. So we create a concept for the checked requirement, which then moves it to the state of conceptualized. You need that concept to go on to the next stage, which is where you actually implement the requirement. Once implemented, you go to testing. If testing fails, you go back to implementing until it doesn't fail the test anymore. If it passes the test, it moves to the next stage of testing. If the implementation is not approved, then you're going back to analyze. If the implementation is approved, then you go into the approved stage where the requirement is subsequently archived and then maybe later deleted or not. So those are quite a lot of steps and information to track just for requirements. And this is like the high level overview. Obviously in detail, there are even more information and now you get a little bit of an idea why it makes sense to talk about traceability in more detail and just instead of just say, yeah, yeah, 
keep track of them.